Now let's go down to this test withdraw from multiple funders. What if I told you there was a way to make this a lot cheaper gas wise? It, co it would cost less gas for us to actually perform. That would be a pretty valuable piece of information, wouldn't it? Every single time we send a transaction or we deploy or we do anything on chain, we have to spend gas. And the more complicated and the more computationally expensive our contracts are, the more gas we have to spend. So what if I told you there was a way for us to make this cheaper? Well, let's figure out how to do that now. How do we even know how much this is gonna cost? That'd be probably be a good thing for us to benchmark, right? What we can do is run forge snapshot dash M, paste that exact test in. What this is gonna do is it's gonna create this file called dot gas snapshot for us. And if let's open this up, it's gonna tell us exactly how much this single test is going to cost in gas. And if we wanted, we could do the conversion between gas and GUI and price and everything to figure out how much this actually costs. But this is now our benchmark. We now have this in our dot gas snapshot. Test withdraw from multiple funders cost this much gas. Okay. All right, cool. So now that we have these functions here, let's go back up here and talk about that gas thing. Because we did vm.prank fundme.getowner and we called a transaction. We should have spent gas, right? Well, how come when we calculate the final balance, the ending owner balance, there's nothing to do with gas here? This has to do with the gas price of the actual chain we're working on. When you're working with Anvil, the gas price actually defaults to zero. So when working with a local Anvil chain, be it forked or not, it actually defaults the gas price to zero. So for us to simulate this transaction with actual gas price, we need to actually tell our test to pretend to use a real gas price. And this is where there is another cheat code that we're going to use called TX gas price, which sets the gas price for the rest of the transaction. So what we can do is same as where we're doing vm.prank, we can do vm.tx gas price, and we can set some gas price. And up at the top, we'll do a uint256 public, or excuse me, uint256 constant gas price. And it could be anything, let's just set it to one. And down here, we'll just say vm.tx gas price, we'll set that to the one. And now in our test here, we'll actually have a gas price. In order for us to see how much gas this is actually gonna spend, we need to calculate the gas left in this function call before and after. To do that, we'll do uint 256 gas start equals gas left. This gas left function is a built-in function in Solidity. It tells you how much gas is left in your transaction call. Remember how on an ether scan, when we scrolled down, there was a gas limit and gas usage. Whenever you send a transaction, you send a little bit more gas than you're expected to use. And you can see how much gas you have left based on how much you send by, by calling this gas left function. So we can get the gas start. And then after we call withdraw, we can do UN 256 gas end equals gas left. So this is how much gas we used. So let's say we sent a thousand gas. Let's say this cost was 200 gas. That means down here we would have 800 gas. And so we can say you into 256 gas used from this withdraw transaction is going to be equal to the gas start minus gas end times whatever the TX dot gas price is. TX dot gas price is another built into solidity, which tells you the current gas price. And then we can use this methodology to do console.log gas used, rerun this test, with the dash VV, and we'll actually be able to see how much gas that exact call actually did, which is right here. But I'm going to go ahead, and now I'm actually going to go ahead and remove all this gas stuff and just bring it back to this. All right, great. Anyways, so we have this gas snapshot. Is there a way for us to make this cheaper and much easier? By golly, there absolutely is. And this is where we're going to actually learn about storage. This thing that I keep talking about and keep referring back to, we're actually finally going to talk about storage up here. 